Hello and welcome to another episode of Sound Insights, WCF Symphony's informational segment, giving you more to think about when you come to our concerts. And this has been a lot of fun for me so far. I hope you've enjoyed these. We've kind of tweaked them a little bit as the year has gone on and we'd love to hear what you think. So definitely let us know if you enjoy Sound Insights. Now this is a special one because we'll be talking about our concert between Bach and the Blues, which has been in development now for a number of years, um, like a variety of projects, kind of took a different path due to the pandemic, and it's actually given us time to think about the program and make some changes to it that we didn't initially think we were going to be putting into place. So I'd like to tell you more about how all of that happened. Now, of course, if you are watching this and you're thinking about coming to the concert, you're probably aware that this performance will feature the artwork of Gary Kelly. And if you've never seen a Gary Kelly performance with us before, um, I'm surprised, but I'll tell you a little bit about it. And if you have seen one, this is a great segment to watch because um, what we're doing with Gary's work this time is a little bit different than we've done before. So uh, again, the basics, we have Gary's artwork. This is animated by... Jacob Mead, who is my colleague in the production company, The New Live. He's our technical wizard, and he's able to take Gary's still images and working alongside Gary, kind of storyboard them into narratives. And these uh, image treatments have become ever more sophisticated over time, as has our queuing system. So now we're at a point with these productions um, where we're able to um, uh, develop this um, artwork driven storyline with whatever um, musical pairing uh, we have in, in in this case it's the music of Bach and Robert Johnson so we'll get to that in a minute uh, we take whatever content we have and we're able to flow that alongside a live performance we have a queuing software that we use live during the show so that the musicians on stage uh, in this case an array of interesting artists from the area and in other cases the full symphony we're able to take our um, musical tempos, interpret things the way we want, and the artwork is still able to stay in sync according to the storyline created by Jacob and Gary. This has been a wonderful project, learning how to do this. We've, we've been working on this you know, over the last decade plus with Gary, and over the last several years, it's become quite a bit more refined, so making it easier for us to do lots of different things with this technology and with Gary's artwork. Now, I mentioned that if you've come to one of these performances before, um, you may sort of know what to expect. You know, we've had big orchestras playing classical works, and Gary's artwork is paired alongside those works. I'd, I'd call it sort of a companion uh, visual narrative to the musical narrative going on um, uh, on, the, uh, on the stage with the orchestra playing. This one's a little bit different in the sense that we will not have a full orchestra on stage at all for any of this performance. In fact, this performance is mainly featuring individual players without an ensemble or, or with just a minor accompaniment. And this is something that uh, evolved out of the very original sort of seed uh, of this show, which was Gary's graphic novel, Bach and the Blues. Now, he's been thinking about this subject for a long time. It explores um, in his mind what the relationship is between um, Pablo Casals, the cellist, who is famous for his recording of the Bach cello suites, and Robert Johnson, the blues guitarist, whose story you may know um, from the American South, the Mississippi Delta. So uh, two unlikely figures to bring together, and yet these, um, these documents that they left behind, these recordings, so in Robert Johnson's case, it's the only recordings he made, and in Pablo Casals case, it's, it's one of many recordings he made, but probably the most important and most famous, his recording of the Bach cello suites. These, um, these documents were made at the same time, almost, almost to the day, uh, and that intrigued Gary, thinking about these two art forms that seem a world apart. Um, they're linked by this kind of um, coincidence in terms of what the artists were doing in different parts of the world, uh, and yet he finds a way to pull together the various strands of this story in, well, I think you're just going to be incredibly pleasantly surprised. Um, the themes that have come out of it, the visuals, and also the way the music comes together. Because in the end, what intrigued us at the symphony was this relationship between Bach, blues music, and other forms of music, especially more uh, modern American forms like blues and jazz. Um, and so we were looking at this, this idea that Gary had, uh, a cellist and a guitarist and his artwork. And we thought, this is incredible. We want to we wanna do this but it's not an orchestra piece and we wanted to find a place for it. So over the course of the pandemic, we began to think that this was the kind of thing we ought to develop 
when things have been, you know, really unpredictable, when we haven't necessarily always been able to bring together a full orchestra. And so that's what we decided to do was to, to scale this into a chamber style performance. So our guest artists for this piece, Isaac Pastor Chermak, our principal cellist, and Kevin Burt, who's an incredible Iowa blues guitarist, are going to provide the musical score um, with selections from Robert Johnson's work and Johann Sebastian Bach's cello suites. And Gary's artwork will be, um, will be projected alongside this performance. But we decided to add some additional music to the program as well uh, to try to amplify this theme of the different types of connections that exist between Bach, who after all was an improviser, you know, much of, of what he might even do in a performance is sit at the keyboard and take a bass line and improvise the rest of the continuo part just from that bass line and the harmony changes. So, so in essence, Bach was kind of a jazz musician improvising along a set of rules. Uh, he also used some really interesting musical techniques that have reappeared again and again throughout musical history and definitely have had an influence and have reappeared in jazz music and in the work of blues artists. And also there's a humanity to Bach's music that's really um, unique and quite singular. And I think we find the same thing in jazz and especially blues music uh, in this country. So the connections seem to abound and we have a few other artists contributing to this program as well. Uh, our principal bassist, Alex Pershunin, is going to be presenting a work that connects these two different forms uh, of Bach and the blues and jazz. And we have a new work on this program, a new musical work commissioned from Michael Conrad. And Mike Conrad's a professor of jazz at the University of Northern Iowa. Uh, he is also a, a former player in the symphony. He, he played a number of times with us doing the work of Duke Ellington and others and did some fantastic work on the keyboard. Um, in those days. So it's amazing to have Mike back now. He's, he's uh, become quite esteemed in his field and to be able to commission a work from him that really crosses these boundaries, I think was intriguing to Mike and really intriguing to us in the context of this performance, this presentation between Bach and, Bach and the blues, where we sort of explore some of the different interactions of the music of Bach with these more modern forms that we know um, as our kind of native musical formats in this country. Um, so that's kind of the story behind the program. You can expect to hear some incredible solo performances. Mike's piece involves uh, seven or eight musicians, a uh, number of them taking solos in a jazz format, but drawing on Bach's music. And of course, our two uh, star musical artists, Isaac Pastor Chermak and Kevin Burt, will be taking on the musical role of, um, of uh, Robert Johnson and Pablo Casals in Bach and the Blues, which is our visual presentation of Gary Kelly's work. We have some other insights into this program coming your way as well in the lead up. And so I hope you'll take some time to hear from some of the other artists who are involved and get a look at the behind the scenes process, not just of how we bring Gary's art to life alongside mu you know, music like this, but also uh, the whole process of creating a new work of music, which Mike is doing for us. Very excited about this performance between Bach and the Blues, um, a multimedia and multi-genre performance, um, which we think is going to really move you exploring the connections between, um, between these different forms of music inspired by Bach. Hope to see you there.